Namaste. So here we are up in the mountains, or in the foothills anyway. It's almost dawn. Birds are chirping. And it's one of those rare quiet mornings. <laughs> and uh, it's clear today. Sun is already up. It's just coming out from behind the hills. So in the last couple of videos, we've been discussing a method that I discovered through practice that leads to the state of moksha. So I want to clarify, first of all, what is moksha? Moksha means deliverance from material existence. What is material existence? It's the state of being where one considers oneself to be a separate individual being. And of course, this is illusion, according to Vedas. Now, after moksha, when one knows aham brahmasmi, I am actually Brahman, simply reflected in a body and mind of conditioned material energy. When one realizes this, one is actually delivered, liberated, will not come back into the material world. So after moksha, then mukti can take place. And what is mukti? Well, we discussed this in an earlier video, five kinds of mukti. So I'm not going to go into it in detail here. But basically, mukti is how you are going to spend the rest of eternity, or the rest of the existence of this universe, anyway. So you have to have a clear idea of what you want, who your Ishta Devata is, what your destination is after this life. So this topic brought up some comments which I found distasteful and I responded to them rather forcefully and with good arguments drawn from Vedic sources. And so the response was that the poster, the commenter, deleted her comment. <laughs> this is not fair. If you're going to start a controversial discussion in the comments on this channel, then you had better be ready to deal with the scriptural sources that either uphold or deny it. Now, this uh, commenter accused me of being a Mayavadi. <laughs> what is Mayavadi anyway? Well, Mayavada is a name concocted by some followers of the Gaudiya Sampradaya. Uh, they claim to be followers of Madhva. And Madhvacharya, of course, was a staunch dualist. Although the followers of Madhvacharya don't accept them, they claim to be following in his footsteps probably because he has a lot more authority, a lot more clout than they do. But anyway, if you're going to call me a Mayavadi, expect a spirited defense, <laughs> because I'm not. Mayavada is actually a pejorative. It's an insult. It's, a, it's saying that you believe that the forms of God and so on are illusion. Well, I don't believe. I don't have to believe. I know from realization and also from the statements of the Shastra that all form is illusion. It's all Maya. And it's all temporary because it has a beginning and an end. Now, don't take my word for it. Let's go to the Vedas, the four Vedas and the Upanishads, and look at the Mahavakyas, the great sayings that summarize 
the actual Vedic philosophy. I've got a whole list of them here drawn from Shiva Purana. Perfect knowledge is Brahman. I am Brahman. Thou art that. That is a code word for Brahman. This Atman is Brahman. In other words, our consciousness, our being. All this is pervaded by the Lord. In other words, the whole universe is actually just God. I am the vital breath, prana. Atman is perfect knowledge. What is here is there. What is there is here. In other words, everything is Brahman. It is other than what is known. Verily, it is other than what is unknown, too. In other words, Brahman is unknowable or unapproachable by the intellect or mind. This is your soul, the imminent and the deathless one. In other words, you are God. He who is in this Purusha and he who is in the sun, both are the same. Another way of saying, I am the Supreme Brahman. I am the great Brahman, the greatest, greater than the greatest. That's pretty clear. I am myself Brahman, characterized by bliss, since I am the master of the Vedas and the Shastras. Brahman is stationed in all living beings. Undoubtedly, I am that alone. I am the vital breath of the elements, of the earth, of the water, of the fire, of the wind, of space, and of the three gunas, goodness, passion, and ignorance. I am all. I am the Atman of all. I transmigrate. I am without a second because I have everything in my Atman, past, present, and future. Indeed, all this is Brahman. I am all. I am the liberated. He who is this is I. I am he. I am Hangsa. I am he. This shall be meditated upon always and everywhere. This is the Vedas speaking. This is the Upanishads speaking. These are not my concoctions. These are not made up ideas. These are the statements of the absolute truth. So anything that goes against these statements is non-Vedic or even anti-Vedic. So the dualistic philosophy that says, I am an individual separate from all other beings and I exist eternally is anti-Vedic. Duality is anti-Vedic. It's illusion. It's maya. Huh? This is false ego. This is the acme of false ego. To think that I am a separate individual being and I have eternal existence and I am totally separate from God and I will never become part of God. Huh? This is what they think. And then they call us who are following the Vedas, the Advaita philosophy, they call us Mayavadis because we say all form is Maya. Well, it is. Vedas say that. The Puranas say it. The Itihasas say it. All the Vedic literatures say it. It's only this one little sect which happens to be very popular basically the uh, devotees of Krishna, 
And they go around saying this. Why? Because it appeals to the false ego. Oh, I am eternal. I am always going to be this same self. Well, if that is the case, then that means your self is actually Atman, is actually Brahman. And there's no difference between you and the Supreme. That is the actual Vedic philosophy. That is the actual truth. And you can know this directly by following the methods that we're discussing on this channel. Now, that doesn't mean that we demean or criticize or what to speak of, insulting the different avatars and forms of God and goddess. Huh? We don't diminish, we don't say that the goddess is less than God. She quite clearly states in the scriptures that she is Brahman. Both Nirguna and Saguna. So why don't these people follow the scriptures? The original Vedic scriptures. Instead, they follow some made up version or some edited translations or some commentaries which have given a different view from the original Vedas. And when they're called out on this, they won't discuss it because they can't produce any evidence <laughs> that their points are any more than their own opinions. So, you know, I've been expecting this sooner or later, that the so-called devotees, the Krishna devotees, are going to accuse me of being a Mayavadi impersonalist and whatever. Well, you know, you can save your insults for somebody who doesn't actually know the truth. Because I'm not going to buy it, and anybody who has actually studied the Vedas is not going to buy it. So it's good that you're worshiping Krishna. It's good that you see him as a part of Vishnu, as an incarnation of Vishnu. And that will give you some merit, and hopefully maybe in a future life, you will come to see the actual purport of the Vedas. But to do that, you have to rise above the Kanishta platform. You have to rise above Karma Yoga. What you call Bhakti Yoga is actually Karma Yoga because it's based solely on rules and regulations. And you wrongly think that perfectly following the rules leads to self-realization. No, it doesn't. It can't, because the rules are external and apply to the body. And how can the body reveal the Atman? It's not possible. There's a beautiful saying, know the self through the self or by the self. Self with a capital S. You know, you can't understand the Supreme or the Absolute by this body and mind or by anything in the world, no matter how great, because none of them are of the same quality as Brahman. Only Brahman can realize Brahman. So if self-realization is possible at all, it rests on the fact that we are Brahman. Now, you might ask the question, and certainly people should ask the question, if we are Brahman, if we are the Supreme, how is it that we come under the influence of Maya and think ourselves to be a creature of duality? And the answer from, from the side of Brahman is that it's a sport. It's a joke. It's an illusion, a pastime. It's not meant to be taken seriously. <laughs> so what happens is the Brahman becomes covered over or superimposed upon by Maya 
which gives the, the impression or the illusion of an individual existence. That is so that Brahman can experience this conditional existence as a sport, as a game, as a joke, as a pastime. It's not the reality. It can't be the reality because it's temporary. So I could go on and on and I could cite hundreds of quotations from the scripture, but it's not going to convince anybody whose mind is made up that they are a dualistic entity separate from all others. However, I have the faith and confidence that in time, if they stick to the process of self-realization, chanting mantras, doing sacrifices, and so on, slowly, slowly, maybe in some future birth, they will come to see the truth that Aham Brahmasmi, Sarva Kalvidam Brahma, Tattvamasi, I am Brahman, you are Brahman, everything is Brahman. Aung Tatsat, Aung Shakti, Aung. Aung Namah Shivaya.